So, you want to know how to use top 10 C Sharp Array methods? This is Daniel, and you are going to get coded. Here I have Visual Studio opened, and let's try to create a new console application by going to File, New, Project. And under Visual C Sharp, Windows Desktop, Console App, here I'm going to name this um, Array Methods, and then hit OK. While this is loading, here I have a link opened. You can find the link in the description down below. So let's look at the first method, array.indexOf. This returns the index of an item inside the array, in our case 2 for lemon. So we have an array of fruits, melon, coconut and lemon. And then we try to get the result, so we try to get the index of the lemon for the fruits array. And this should be um, this should be 2. So let's try to see that. Windows key, right arrow, and let's begin. So we need an array of fruits and new square brackets and we need melon, coconut, and lemon. So these five fruits and then var result array.index of fruits, so we pass fruits, the array as the first argument, and then lemon, the object we are looking for. And let's try to print out to the console the index, so the result in our case, and then console.read key to be able to see what we get on the, on the um, console. So F5, and let's see the actual result, which is 2 indeed. So we have 0, 1, and 2. This is the, the index number 2, so the third position in our array. Cool, let's continue. Array that exists. It checks to see whether or not an item exists in an array. This accepts a predicate. And if you don't know what's a predicate, it is a function that returns either true or false. So it returns a Boolean value. So index of, uh, instead of index of, we need to use exists. But then we need to pass a lambda expression. And don't be scared about this lambda expression. S let me try to explain. So we have fruits as an array. And then for each fruit inside our fruits array, check to see if this contains the letter L. If it does, add it to the result. Otherwise, continue on. So let's do that. Instead of this part over here, I will try to I will try to type array that exists fruits, and then fruit pass to this is how you call it fruit that contains l, and this should return true or, or false to uh, whether or not we have an item which. Um, complies to this condition over here. So let's try to say F5 and it's true. So we have at least an item that satisfies this condition and I'm going to resize this a little bit over here. Okay, let's continue on. Array.find. This simply finds an item in an array. So we have an array over here and we try to find an item that contains the letter L and this will return the first item that satisfies this condition over here. So it's very similar to what we have over here. Instead of exists, we need find, and that's it. Let's try to press F5, and we can see melon. This is the first item in our collection that satisfies this condition over here. Let's press any key. Array.findLast, as the find method over here, but this starts from the end of the array. So instead of starting from the beginning, we start from the end. So find last, this will start from the end. And this should print out lemon indeed, because it contains the letter L and is the last, it's also the first one from the, uh, from the end. Find index. We can also find the index of an item by using a predicate, again, true and false function. So instead of find last, we have find index. And we have the same condition. It should contain the letter L. 
Let's try to press F5 and we see zero. So again, it starts from the beginning and melon is the first item in our array which has which contains the letter L. Okay, let's try to press any key and let's continue. Find all. So we can find all the items that pass a certain condition. So we have a fruit array and then we have here find all with the same condition. It should contain the letter L. Let's try to replace this, find all. And if we hover over var, we can see that right now we have an array of strings. So it returns an array, a collection. It returns all of them. So we cannot just print them with console right line. We need a for each. And we need to iterate through all the items for all the fruits, uh, all the fruits inside our result array. And here we have console right line fruit. And I didn't mean to uh, press the enter. So let's try F5. And we have melon and lemon. So both of these fruits contain the letter L indeed. And remember, because this is an array, we need a for each to actually iterate through all the items in our array and uh, display uh, each fruit uh, individually. Next is array.reverse. We can reverse the items in an array. So we have array.reverse and we need to pass the fruits array. And I'm going to remove all this and let's say array.reverse and we need to pass the fruits array. And right now we need to iterate through the fruits, through the fruits array, not through the result anymore. So let's try to press F5 and we see lemon, coconut and melon indeed in the opposite order as we have over here. Next one is array.copy. We can copy the items of an array to another one. The third argument is to specify how many items you want to copy. The third argument over here. So as you can see, we, ha we need a new fruits array. And this is an array of string items and we need to pass the capacity or the size. And we need to make sure that it has the same size as the fruits over here. That's why we pass fruits.length. And then we copy uh, from our source fruits to our destination fruits2. We need to copy uh, the first two items. So let's try to declare that variable. So fruits2 is going to be new string square brackets fruits.length and then we need to call array.copy. The first one is our, is our source, the second one is our destination, and the third one is the length or how many items you want to copy. And let's try to iterate over the second array this time and let's print the result to the console. And we have melon and coconut, indeed the first two items in our fruits array. Also, we have a tip over here to copy all the items, just pass fruits.length as the third argument. So you can pass fruits.length over here and this will copy all the, uh, all the items. And let's see that. So we have melon, coconut and lemon, indeed all the items. Array.sort. One of the most important things is to sort an array. So we have again our fruits array and then we call array.sort and we pass our fruits. And then we print the fruits out. So instead of copy, we need sort. We still need to pass fruits. And this is the only argument that we need to pass to the sort method over here. Let's press F5 and we have, and we have nothing indeed because fruits2 is empty. So I don't want to iterate over fruits2, I want to iterate over fruits. F5, and we have coconut, lemon, and melon. So C, L, and M in alphabetical order, indeed. And let's try to remove fruits2 because we don't need it anymore. That was only for copy. 
but maybe we want to reverse the order, so descending order. In this case, we need to create a new class which implements the iComparer interface, and this class over here. So you can see we have a new class which implements this interface, and this interface exposes or has the compare method. And this compare method ha um, a has two items, so x and y, and compares to uh, these two items together. So let's try to create that. I want to create that class outside of the program class, and I'm going to say public class reverse comparer, and it's very difficult to pronounce, comparer, and I'm going to implement the iComparer interface of type string, and then control dot on the iComparer, and then implement interface. And because we want in the reverse order, we need to start with y, so return y dot compare to x. If we want it in the ascending order, we would say x um, dot compare to y. And now we need to pass an instance of this class as an argument to the sort method. As you can see here, we still have fruits, but then we need a new reference, a new instance, sorry, for this uh, class. So new reverse compare. And this will create a new object, a new instance of this class over here. And if we press F5, we can see that right now our fruits are um, sorted in descending order. So we start with melon, lemon, and then coconut. So M, L, and C. Let's press any key. And the last one, array that binary search. You can search for an element in a sorted array and make sure that, um, that the array is sorted in ascending order before applying this algorithm. And just to give you a brief explanation, uh, when, whenever you try to find an array with, uh, by using array.find or just a, a simple for each loop, this is still a linear search. So it starts from the beginning and tries to find the item. Imagine you have an array with 2,000 items and that item is the last one. You have to go through all the items until the end. This binary search is more efficient and I'm going to make a separate video for this in the future, so keep on watching. Um, as I said, we want to sort um, the array uh, descending, and here I have a typo. It's not prices, it's fruits. So I will, I will um, fix this, uh, and I will post it uh, to my personal website. So array.sort fruits, and I'm going to sort the fruits indeed. And then we need to use binary search. So let's try to save var index, we need to get the index, array.binary search. We are going to pass again fruits, not prices, and coconut. Let's try to find the index for coconut. And if the index is minus one, so this binary search will return minus one if uh, it doesn't find the item that you want to find. So CW and then we can print just nothing. Otherwise, we are going to print the index. So CW index. And let's try to print to uh, run this application and we have zero. And we have zero because the array is sorted. As you can see, you have coconut, lemon and melon. And indeed, the coconut item has the index zero. So it's the first one in our sorted array. One more thing that I want to, um, to tell you, if an array contains duplicate elements, meaning elements which have the same values, the, then binary search will return the index of one of those elements. So if you have 
more than one coconut in your array, it will return one of those indexes. So it will not return the first, uh, the first uh, element that satisfies uh, the item. Uh, it will return just a random one uh, if there are duplicates. Okay, so if you are interested how to implement these methods procedurally, meaning reinventing the wheel, that's coming up next. I hope you found uh, this helpful and if you did, please click thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. Right now my goal is to have 1000 subscribers and uh, if I have uh, those, I will start posting Q&A videos on Fridays. Until next time, bye guys.